Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Over 30 years ago, I worked as a trainer for a company called Omega Seminars, founded by a man named John Boyle. And he had come up with a, a fascinating discovery about human nature, which has been very important in my own character development ever since then. And I can sum it up in three words, unconditional self love. And uh, each of those words is important. Let's start with the one in the middle, self, because many people think, oh, he's so full of himself, or uh, a person loves himself means that they're very egotistical. Uh, that's not what I mean. I'm using the term self here in the Jungian sense, not the ego, but the deep self. One might say the spirit, the underlying consciousness, the witness within each of us, the point of self-awareness, the spiritual being that we each are. It is so vast and so profound and, and so deep, uh, we have no idea of the extent of the self. One might even say we all share a self. So, unconditional, the first word in that phrase, really means exactly that, loving oneself, having a warm, positive feeling toward oneself without placing any conditions upon it. In other words, no matter what I think, no matter what I feel, no matter what I do, I can love myself. It doesn't mean that I uh, don't want to improve. It doesn't mean that I'm above all criticism by no means. I can constructively work on becoming a better person every day of my life. I can uh, acknowledge my weaknesses and my faults and my various misgivings. I uh, am certain that there are many things for which I need to atone or make amends in my life. But that doesn't stop me from having unconditional self-love for the deep spiritual being within me, the deep spiritual being that I am. Unconditional self-love. Now, love may be the trickiest of, of all of these. I mean, we use the word so much that it is, in, in some sense, almost meaningless. Um, and I'm a person who has that word in my very last name, Mishlov. So <laughs> it's, it, you could say it's a conundrum. It's a peculiar thing, but we know what the opposite of love is. And uh, many of us have areas of self-hatred, areas where we really don't like ourselves. And that's a sad thing. And not only is it sad, it's an unnecessary thing. There's no reason to go through life hating oneself. I mean, let's take the most extreme example, Hitler. For Should Hitler be full of self-hatred? That's a really, really hard one. But I'm going to suggest to you at this point in time that even Hitler shares a deep, underlying spiritual being, one that is pure and unvarnished in spite of his bad behavior. I know this is going to be hard for some people to digest and accept, and I'm not asking anybody to accept it, frankly. Uh, it's probably too extreme an example, but it's uh, I'm putting it out there in any case. Uh, Fortunately, I think it's fair to say that nobody viewing this video is a Hitler. We all have things that we need to correct and atone for in our lives. And if one considers the possibility of past lives, and if you have viewed the New Thinking Aloud series, you know that there's a great deal of empirical evidence supporting the notion of past lives, then 
we all have participated in uh, crimes because the history of humanity is one of many, many crimes, as, among other things. Now, I'd like to suggest to you a vision of consciousness that is much larger, much wider than reincarnation. And that is the notion embodied in the concept of cosmic consciousness. Cosmic consciousness suggests that we are one with everything, that we are everyone, past, present, and future, who has ever lived. So there's a Hitler within us. In fact, one might say in a literal sense, every time you take a breath of air, you're breathing in molecules that were actually physically, literally breathed in by uh, not only Adolf Hitler, but everyone else who has ever lived in the history of humanity. We have that within us. So one might say in a deep sense that self-love is not only love for one's own self, but love for everyone and everything, love of the whole universe. Love of the whole universe. No matter what happens, no matter how many planets explode and are destroyed, no matter how many supernovas there are, or how many galaxies collide, or how many injustices are done, there is a level described eloquently by the uh, wonderful psychiatrist Dr. Stanislav Grof in his book, The Cosmic Game, in, in which he suggests that we can transcend all of our conventional human emotions around these things and just be at one and at peace with the universe as a whole. Now, this may seem very idealistic and very improbable, but what I will be doing is suggesting to you that there are specific techniques that you can do to enter into a state of total, unconditional self-love in the largest sense. And the first thing to be aware of in this regard are the thoughts that you hold, that you tell yourself, because each thought is a vibrant spiritual being. Each thought has a force, has a power, but we also have choice. We don't have to accept the thoughts that pass through our mind. So if I have a, a negative thought toward myself, like, oh, I'm so stupid, which happens to most of us from time to time, I say to myself, cancel that thought. Or maybe I used to be stupid, or maybe I did something stupid that should be corrected, but I, I, myself, my deep self, not my ego, my deep self is not stupid. My deep self <laughs> is incredibly wise, wise beyond all imagination, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's not easy to practice this at first. It can seem almost impossible to catch those thoughts and to change them. But actually, I'll be going into this in a future episode of In Presence. Actually, the technique of self-hypnosis uh, is very profound and very powerful, and with a little bit of practice, it becomes just second nature to catch those negative thoughts and to say, cancel that thought, change that thought. We are, in effect, imprisoned by those thoughts. We live in a cultural trance state where we're surrounded by thoughts of, I can't do this, and this is impossible, and I'm too young, or I'm too old, or I'm too weak, or I'm too strong, or I belong to this group of people who are being persecuted. In my case, one might say parapsychologists, but it might be your race, or your religion, or your national origin, or your sex, or uh, your body size. None of those things need to limit us. All of them can be overcome. We live, as I say, in a prison where we think things are impossible, where we think like it's impossible. How can I love myself unconditionally? I'm telling you, you can. It is possible. And just hold that thought. Consider that as a possibility. And remember that 
there will be more instruction along these lines as I uh, endeavor to produce these in-present segments on a daily basis. And also remember that they are designed to be viewed in sequence, starting with uh, the first one. That's why I've numbered them. And this is number two, uh, because I find that the idea of unconditional self-love is so fundamental, so profound, so important. When you can enter into that state of knowing that you're okay no matter what, if you're crippled, if you're sick, if you're uh, experiencing extreme stress, you can still be in a state of self-love it's available to you. I found that uh, during my trials and tribulations, large and small, that uh, this little technique and this little knowledge has, has uh, been of great value to me. And so I'm sharing it with you now. There will be more to come. Thank you for being with me. <music> Thank you.